In this video, we are tracking multiple storms that will feature heavy snow, flooding rains, and severe weather. The Storm Prediction Center has issued a slight risk of severe weather for tomorrow, Friday, and Saturday. We're going to take a close look at the forecast and even explore one factor that could make the next storm massive. Welcome back, y'all. Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. You guys are probably aware that we have a lot going on, so I'm not going to waste too much time here. But before we start today, please consider slapping that like button for the YouTube algorithm so we can get this very important information information out to as many people as possible. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button while you're down there and let's start talking about the weather. All right, here's a big old look at the United States of America and we're looking at the radar here, okay? We do have our leading storm, okay? I talked yesterday about a parade of storms coming through. This is the front end or the appetizer section is what I like to call it. This is actually bringing some pretty decent snow here to portions of Iowa and Northern Illinois and also some heavy rain from central Missouri all the way through central Indiana. This is gonna continue to go off to the east and to the Northeast. I call this the appetizer round because it's really not going to produce much in the way of severe weather like our other storm systems will, but we are still going to analyze it on the weather models. Let's get started now. All right, here's a look at that NAM three kilometer model. We always love starting out with this. This is what the radar could look like as we go into the future. If you want to keep up with the date and time, it's up there above my head in Eastern time because that's where I'm from. Here we are starting off around noon when the video goes up here. We're still going to be seeing that snow breaking out into more northern portions of Iowa, maybe even getting into to Wisconsin there. Possibly a couple claps of thunder down here in southwestern portions of Indiana and southeastern Illinois. We're going to scoot over here to the Ohio Valley and you can see how that snow is really spreading out here. It's northwestern Ohio. You're going to see a very quick burst of snow. Southern portions of Michigan, northern Indiana as well. Uh, and of course we are going to see some of that heavier snow work its way into Wisconsin there. This stuff gets out of the way very quickly. In fact, a lot of you that start as snow, especially here in Ohio, Indiana, and Illinois, you're going to end as rain as that warm air advex further to the north. And if we shift our focus over to the northeast, you guys are going to get a pretty decent burst of snow this evening into the early morning hours tomorrow. Also some decent rain showers and isolated thunderstorms all the way down into the Appalachian Mountains, but everything really fizzles out very quickly here, okay? Total snowfall looks like this, okay? The winter is going to be there in southern Wisconsin where some people could see three to six inches of snow. Definitely a real possibility there in Wisconsin. Southern Michigan and extreme northern Ohio and Indiana, you guys could see three inches of snow maybe. But remember, it's not going to stick around very long because, well, it's going to melt. Once again, nothing crazy here for our appetizer storm. Now let's talk about the more significant one that comes tomorrow. All right, zooming in on the southeast here, we have to talk about the severe weather that is possible tomorrow. We're going to start off looking at the HRRR model, which is the high resolution rapid refresh model. Once again, simulated radar. Let's put it into motion. This is how this is going to work out. There's going to be a little area of thunderstorms that goes through Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia, maybe even working its way up into eastern Tennessee tonight into the early morning hours tomorrow. This will be another situation, just like I talked about up here in the Ohio Valley, up through the Appalachian Mountains, where these storms should be below severe limits, but they will absolutely be storms, okay? Lightning, thunder, all that good stuff, but nothing to worry about. That is just setting the stage for this next system that comes through that you can really start to see very well here around 3 p.m. on Wednesday. And this is what's actually going to produce the severe weather, okay? If I move this forward just a little bit into the 7 p.m. time frame, you can really see what's happening here. First of all, I want to talk about the warm front here, okay? So the main area of concern for this storm is going to be down here in Mississippi and Alabama, but I think this little feature here is being a little bit overlooked. So if you are in Middle Tennessee, I would definitely watch out for these storms uh, on Wednesday in the afternoon from around 5 p.m. all the way through 9 p.m. because the chance is there for some straight line damaging winds and certainly some flood rains, okay? The further south you go in the state of Tennessee, especially around the border of Alabama and Tennessee here, there's going to be a secondary threat for tornadoes here. It's not huge, okay? But I would keep my guard up because I do think there's going to be a little bit more spin in the atmosphere there. Now, the main story is going to be these bands of supercells that form here from Mississippi into Alabama. I do think we're going to have some of these storms pop up, and I think we're going to see possibly some tornadoes, okay? So let me explain why. First of all, we got to take a look at them 850 millibar winds or as we call it here on this channel, tornado juice. And as you can see where those storms are, we do have some, okay? It's not crazy. We've definitely seen uh, systems with more tornado juice, with more upper air dynamics that are favorable for tornadoes. However, we do have some there, okay? If this roots up, if we get any storms that interact with this lower level jet stream, it's almost certainly going to provide enough spin to cause tornadoes. Also, dew points are going to be surging right before the storms hit. In Mississippi and Alabama here, 
you know, it's going to be nine o'clock at night and your dew points are going to be in the upper 60s and close to 70. Also, another parameter that has upscaled or uptrended a little bit is the cape. OK, this is the visual representation of how much energy is in the atmosphere uh, to fuel these storms. And once again, right where we think those supercell thunderstorms are going to be popping up, uh, we have anywhere between a thousand and two thousand joules per kilogram of convective available potential energy. To simplify that, storms need to eat. All right. To grow. Just like people. And these storms ain't going to be hungry. And of course, if you put all of those parameters together, uh, it gives you something called the significant tornado parameter. It looks at all these things and kind of puts a model together that shows us on a scale of 1 to 10 uh, what the likelihood of seeing a tornado is. Sort of. That, that's sort of what this model does. And as you can see, around 7 p.m. on Wednesday, uh, we've got an 8 out of 10. Okay, we've got a pretty decent area here where those supercells may be forming. And this favorable air mass is going to follow the storms as they add back to the north and east in central portions of Alabama, we could still be talking about an ongoing tornado threat all the way into 11 p.m. So this isn't bad, okay? This isn't like a widespread tornado outbreak. It's not looking like it's going to be as bad as some of the other ones that we've seen this year, but the possibility is there. And like I always say, you know, even if there's only one tornado from this whole storm system, if that thing comes towards you, you're going to wish that you would have paid attention and gotten prepared. Here's the latest SPC update. We got a slight risk with a very large 5% area for tornadoes. And then of course the hail and wind is also uh, very large as well. So I think this is gonna be a widespread severe weather outbreak. I'm not necessarily convinced that this is going to be some giant tornado outbreak. No matter what, I'm gonna be here tracking it. And more than likely, if it looks like the situation is gonna be significant at all, I will be live tomorrow on this channel covering it for you. Follow me on all my social media stuff to make sure you're updated on when I plan on doing that. All right, moving on here. Let's answer the question. Uh, what could make this next storm massive? As you guys know, we do have another storm coming right after the one we just talked about. And I wanted to share with you a very interesting aspect of the storm uh, that I've been watching very closely over the past couple of days. So what we're looking at here is the 500 millibar wind speeds. It's about 18,000 feet up in the air. And if you pay attention here, you can really see two defining features. All right. We obviously have a storm or some piece of energy here and then another big trough digging down uh, from the Northwest. And some of the earlier model runs were showing this happening in a little bit more of a synchronous fashion where this piece of energy actually interacted with this one in a symmetrical fashion. And we saw what we call phasing happen and then creating a situation where the trough that results from that, it would become more neutral, therefore moving more air on either side of the storm, just making it a more significant storm, making it a massive storm. You can also see this happen if we look at vorticity here. Watch how they dance around each other. And then this piece of energy kind of flings the initial one off to the north and east, and they never really combine. They never phase. They never come together. And we're stuck with this positively tilted trough that sweeps across the entire eastern portion of the U.S. And don't get me wrong, that's going to cause problems. This is a big storm. We're still expecting severe weather down here and some snow up on uh, the northwestern side. But as we get closer to the storm, I'm going to continue to watch these model runs very closely, because if these two pieces of energy do interact with each other on a closer level, the storm is almost certainly going to be bigger. All of the warm, juicy energy from the subtropical jet stream and all of the cold air associated with the polar jet, uh, if, if they were to combine here and then sort of swing through uh, the rest of the country, we'd be talking about a much bigger storm. The reason I'm even bringing this up is because I've seen some bad actors out there on Facebook and on YouTube here where they're showing this map and they're like, wow, this major storm is going to get eaten by this major storm. And then watch this. Whoa, we have a superstorm that's going to, you know, kill everybody. And that is just not true. We are not going to see a superstorm, not even close. What even is a superstorm? Phasing is a very common thing that happens, and we're not even sure if it's going to happen here. But even if it does, even if we have a worst case scenario unfold, it's not going to be the end of the world, okay? Don't buy into the hype and certainly don't be scared, but rather be prepared. All right, moving on here. Let's talk about what's actually going to happen with our storm that's coming in, which is, you know, possibly going to be a very big storm, but it's not a super storm. First of all, we have a huge trough here, okay? And it's positively tilted. Whenever the bottom of the axis of the trough is pointing towards the southwest, that's a positive tilt. This means as a lot of that wind energy is transferred around the southern portion of it, it's likely going to be spread out over a broad area over here on the east coast rather than 
them being stacked right on top of each other, which is why generally a positively tilted trough is not as intense or scary as a neutral or negatively tilted trough. However, like I said yesterday, it, it's these trough ejections that are responsible for moving air around and moving air is what's responsible for weather. So this is definitely gonna cause some weather here. In fact, I think that this storm poses an even greater threat for severe weather than the one for tomorrow because look at all that nadir juice. Some of those winds are gonna get funneled down closer to the surface and we're gonna have a lot of nadir juice out there. It's gonna be bad as we can see some big time storms popping up from uh, Texas into Arkansas and Missouri later in the day on Friday, December 31st. So we could have some additional fireworks going on here uh, other than just the New Year's Eve fireworks as these big storms track off to the east and to the southeast. Watch this, you see that's where the storms are and that's where the lower level jet stream is gonna be. So you can see, you know, there is some interaction going on there. I do think we're gonna have a tornado threat with this system, but of course we're gonna have more details as we go into the future. And I kinda wanna take it one storm at a time, okay? So that, that's all I'm gonna say about the severe weather threat now, but over the next couple of days, I'm gonna update you significantly on this threat. Also, it's not just rain and storms. We also have snow, okay? So the big cold system that's coming out of the Northwest is gonna continue to dump snow in the Pacific Northwest, across the plateaus, and even into the Rocky Mountains here. Uh, 10 a.m. Friday, December 31st, it's gonna be snowing hard. In Colorado, Utah, you know, the Four Corners region there, especially in the higher elevations. And that's associated with our big storm that is gonna cause the severe weather down here. And then a, a little bit of snow on the Northwestern side. Now, yesterday we talked about how, uh, you know, this could be a little bit further south than this. It could be a little bit further north than this. It's too early, really, uh, to talk about the exact placement. But I promise you, somebody up here is gonna see a decent snowstorm out of this. Right now, the Euro is showing the heaviest snows tracking through Iowa, Northern Illinois, Southern Wisconsin, and Central and Southern uh, Michigan, kind of the same areas that are getting snow today. And then of course, that big warm front is gonna keep you all rain there on the East Coast, unfortunately. Maybe a little bit of uh, snow on the backside, but man, just not much at all going on there. Now there is gonna be a decent amount of cold air come down behind the storm. As you can see, we're gonna get a good burst of very cool air for a lot of the Eastern and Southeastern portion of the US, uh, especially on January 3rd there, it's gonna feel cold. It's gonna feel like winter maybe for a little bit, but as you can see, the warm air is returning. And if you are one of the lucky people that gets snow over the next couple of days, Days with one of these storms, it's not gonna stick around long because man, I'm telling you, it, it's, it's gonna melt. We're back to 20 to 30 degrees above average here in the Midwest. Uh, around 7 a.m. on January 6th. Now, even though all this snow over here might melt pretty quickly, we're gonna be seeing an additional 50 inches of snow possibly in the higher elevations of the Rocky Mountains there, uh, a foot or two of snow more on top of what you already got in the Sierras and the Cascades. Talk about a drought buster down here in California, by the way. You guys have got your reserves in place. But yeah, from this area points uh, east, uh, you know, once again, this snow is not gonna stick around very long unless we get that big phasing, unless we get that, you know, super storm. <laughs> One last thing I wanna mention, all this rain, okay? Uh, so we are gonna see an absolute ton of rain on the eastern part of the US. If you see your location covered in red, dark red, or brown, get ready. Uh, because you know, even if you don't see severe weather, even if you don't see snow, even if you don't see the strong winds and stuff like that, you are gonna see a lot of rain. And especially, I'm kinda concerned about the Appalachian Mountain area here. Uh, you know, if we get four or five, six inches of rain in a short period of time, it's going to lead to flash flooding problems. So if you live in a flood prone area, be ready for that. And that's all the weather talk I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to hear from me more than once a day, make sure you follow me on all my social media stuff. Go join our Discord server. There's a link in the description. And of course, slap that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and turn them notifications on. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Woo!